Hey guys, Kevin here, talking about this 2012 Allegro Open Road 30 GA. It's a 2012, I think I said that. Um, super clean coach, paint looks fantastic. This is actually a color called Gold Coral. It's actually always been my favorite color. That's true. I love the white stripe through the side that just really really makes the paint pop and then you get a bit of black in the back to balance it out and kind of just looks cool to, to me so this is kind of like a timeless color and they've used it for many many years i think they still might offer it but they've made some color changes recently but i did have somebody order a coach in this color last year so i know at least since last year they still had gold coral anyhow let's take a look at the coach they've got their signature piece here there's really a safety window but everybody calls it the doggy door or doggy window i guess and it's really um kind of like a tiffin thing i mean a lot of other companies are doing it now but uh, i think they started it this is a really impressive side camera unfortunately they're not even using as good of a side camera anymore they used to train us on these how they were uh, had a built-in defroster so if you're in the mountains or somewhere cold your camera would probably not get uh, frozen over or frosted over. Um, so they're not good using those anymore, um, but it's on this one. So the tires on this coach are pretty fresh. They were put on probably in 2020 or late 19. The date code on the tire is the 19th week of 2019, or this, sorry, the second week of 2019. That's the production date. So. Usually within a year of production, they'll actually make it on a tire. It could be within a few months or so, but nonetheless, they're, they're pretty fresh tires. We still check them, make sure everything looks good. And if we have to replace anything like that, same thing with the batteries. If anything doesn't check out, we have no problem making sure those things are good to go. This coach just got back from smog. I think it first came in on December 9th. And then... It went to get, it got cleaned here, kind of an initial cleaning, and then went to smog. And I think it probably came back on Monday. So it's really been on the lot since the beginning of this week. And then yesterday was crazy rain. So um, it's kind of just got here. And I'd say it's probably our nicest piece that we have. So uh, let's take some, a little bit closer look here. I open up all the compartments, but you can see as I go around the paint, it looks great. If I even see a scratch or anything, I'll, I'll point it out. And um, this is the first storage compartment that goes all the way through. Got a couple, an outlet there and a 12 volt and TV connector. Their doors are all made in house. All the metal is cut in house. And really their doors are the best, I think still to this day that anybody makes i don't care what brand nobody makes a door like this in a gas coach nonetheless in a diesel pusher and this is the same kind of door you get in their most expensive diesel pusher they don't cut corners um depending on which level of coach they're selling you central vacuum another pass-through compartment this is probably the largest one i like to show you kind of inside too the under Neat areas where everything still looks nice and fresh. So all the seals look good. This compartment in a Tiffin is always where the water supply is. I want to say this is a 70 gallon, not counting the fresh, not counting the hot, uh, or the not counting the hot water heater which holds another 10 I believe so technically it's an 80 gallon because that adds 10 more but most 30 foot coach coaches and even in a little bit bigger ones uh, except for a couple brands most of them are giving you about a 50 gallon tank these days easy to empty out the water if you need to the water pump is right there real easy to get to this is a gravity fill for your water so if you want to fill it up for home we give you a fresh 
pack of hoses, adapters, chemicals. It's, all, it's actually called the safety starter package. It's a nominal 450 bucks. It's the only kind of, whoops, wrong key. Or knows it the right key. I'm just doing it wrong. It covers us filling up the 80 gallon, oops, fuel, the propane. It pays the orientation guy for his time. Anyway, well, I'm having trouble getting in there, but what it is is just a place to, to get a hose into so you can fill up from home. We give you an attachment that sticks on the, that fits on the end of the hose. So it'll just kind of rest in there. And then there's a little receptacle where it allows the water to get out when it's full. And that's, it's on most, a lot of different brands have stuff like that. We call it gravity fill. That's the, uh, another outside GFCI outlet. This is your furnace. This is the back of the refrigerator. This is for the shower, access to the plumbing in the shower, I believe. So we call the safety starter package, this box of about 20 plus items, gadgets, hoses, you know, every little thing you need so you don't have to go shopping for it yourself. And it's all fresh stuff. It's, um, we fill up the propane, the fuel, the $450 also covers the orientation guy, his time, those guys are, all here to perform orientations that's their only job and they do that um and that's all part of that same kind of nominal charge to cover our costs on those extras so i literally take the coach over to the gas station myself and fill it up and propane and all that stuff so this is one of my favorite little things of their of their outside storage is that they have this little thinner storage area that's above the propane tank and on the other side the generator now what's cool about that is that it really creates a buffer between the generator especially and when you have when you have things inside this compartment it's even better to buffer what's going on as far as the sound so you don't really hear the generator that much when you're inside as you would in a lot of different units and I'll demonstrate that looks like this one has um, mud guards <laughs> Not something you always see. I don't think anyway. Yeah, not all motorhomes have those mud flaps. So here we go. Next compartment, another one that goes all the way through. So for a 30 foot motorhome, you've got two, three, four compartments that go all the way through. Another great thing about them is their rear caps are so nice and thick. Just well done. They have a one piece molded fiberglass roof they produce their own fiberglass so you're getting this really thick grade of fiberglass not just a thin sheet of phylon that most brands are forced to use because they don't have a fiberglass plant but this this roof is really I, I call it a lid it's kind of like literally like a lid that fits over the top and so there's no stress on the corners a lot of brands have to fold the fiberglass over the corner and then bolt it down or attach it which does cause stress at this at the um where the the corner is at and these in this case it's molded to that shape as is the rear cap all these corners are one molded piece of fiberglass so there's a solar panel on the roof i think it's in the pictures i took a picture of the roof you also get two air conditioners and on a 30 foot coach that's not very common here's the hitch back here everything looks nice and fresh i really like that they put their guest their gas fill in the back instead of the side it allows you to fill up at a truck stop or gas station when you can only get on get in on one side and don't have an easy choice of using either side, you can reach over and, and fill from either side when it's in the back like that. It's the other side of that pass-through. That's your transfer case, search guard, uh, transfer switch, 50 amp cord. tiny little scratch right there most of that would buff out and it might even all buff out um, but that's just pointing out what I see so there's the um, 5500 owning generator that's 
not typical for most 30 footers, but when you have two roof airs, you have to have a 5500 to run both of them at the same time. There's your dump station, your outside shower, you've got tank flush, so that's like a sprinkler system inside your black tank, right over here. And it looks like these people had a service that came by to professionally flush their tanks for them, so they didn't do it, and they got probably got done and leave them done, you know, better. That's kind of cool. And we have a service that comes by and does it as well. They'll, of course, do it again once they get here um, soon. But you have just a nice open, there's ton, plenty of space to work here. Just a piece of trash. Um, there's a filter there, it's easy to get to. Full coach filtration. There's your Atwood, I believe, 10 gallon water heater, hot water heater. The other side of your storage here. For the big one. This one is your, that goes all the way through, but right here is your um, hydraulic system for your jacks and slides. You can see how nice and clean it is. There's no current oil leaks, which is a good thing. And uh, everything looks, looks like it should. This is where the electrical is stored. I love how they encase everything nicely. It's just really well laid out. That's a slide motor there, which has instructions on it. If you ever had a slide give you trouble, there's a step-by-step, um, -step, you know, kind of a guide to getting it working or at the very worst case scenario, you can unplug, I think the white plugs and it releases the hold on the slide and somebody could actually push it in my hand. And then you plug it back in and it locks it down. It's like the braking um, electric brake system. So you can always do something if you need to, to get it in. But these things are pretty reliable these days. I'm not sure what this is, but I was trying to read it. But anyway, it's all part of the charging system, probably, because I see the batteries going into there, the battery cables. All right. I think we covered the outside. Oh, this is one thing of the engine. I did find a fix. One thing that'll need to be, I mean, that could be fixed is these pistons, these struts, they're no longer holding the weight of, of this hood release. So those are simple fixes, but those are little things that we would take care of and make sure that you have to, don't have to worry about little annoying things like uh, the hood not staying up when you're trying to check your oil. But the engine compartment looks good. Everything looks like it should. That's what we love about Tiffin. Everything looks good for many, many years. Their paint is a BASF brand. That is one of the, it's actually the most expensive paint. And they don't use it because it's the most expensive. They use it because they think it's the best and it holds up for many, many years. There's two coats of clear over the paint. And um, so found another little thing to point out. So you see on this mirror, this is a, some kind of metal here. And on this one over here, this coat on this particular section only is coming apart. So. We probably just repaint it because the mirror as a whole is in otherwise excellent condition. And this coating here is just over the last 10 years started to chip off. So pretty simple, but I'm just pointing out what I see. Like I said, let's take a look. I put the awning out to see if there's any tears in it. Doesn't look like there are. Head on in. The batteries are kept underneath here. Let's see if I can open that with one hand. Give me a little sec. Okay, two hands. There's your house batteries. These are deep cycle. These are definitely good batteries. I don't see the date um, 
clearly posted, but they do look like fresh batteries. I mean, we might have just put them on. They look new. They don't look like they have any dust on them or dirt. But nonetheless, all this stuff gets checked out. There's a possibility those got put on when they did the initial inspection because that's one of the first things they might do. As we enter here. So this dinette actually is in still very good condition. It's probably the only thing that doesn't need to be upholstered. There's storage down here. There's the hoses for the central vacuum. Storage on this side too. There we go. I like that I noticed when I was kind of opening things up, there's not a lot of a lot of wear and tear inside the drawers and things that were banging around. So they did a good job storing things properly. So we've got some storage up above here. Good size storage. I noticed there's a little blemish in this. I think it may have just come like this because the seams look really perfect in their design and how they've put all this together. But then up here, it's like the piece is too long. I wonder if it just has been like this from the factory, from the factory ever since. My solution for that would probably be just to stain with a stain pen that matches this, this little part that's unpainted that we probably wouldn't ever notice that minor um, difference in the wood length there. But, um, other than that, looks good. So I think it's great that the ent the entire original set of manuals for the coach is here, and the roughing it smoothly Tiffin bag, especially the owner's manual. We really only get these things ten to twenty percent of the time, and it's so it's nice I think to have that and not you know, so you can refer back to it. You've got day and night shades. This is another cool thing that they don't use anymore. So these are on a pulley system. Instead of the spring operated ones that you see now. And this brand is called MCD, I believe. And they still use MCD shades. There's the solar shade. But they're now on a spring pole. And they don't last that long. These things were made to last. They used to tell us how great they were. But after about 2012 or 13, I guess they couldn't get them anymore. anymore. They couldn't get this same design. So whenever I run into these, I'm still kind of impressed by them. This was also the first or second year that all the lights went to LEDs, which are obviously going to take a lot less power. So take a look at the front. Got some storage areas up here. Um, this TV was replaced with a Vizio. I think it's a smart TV. I think I found the remote when I was doing the pictures. So that's kind of nice. You have an upgraded TV. There, there's a um, WineGuard stationary satellite. So if you have Direct TV or Dish Network, I think it can work for either or. I'll storage up here. Again, this here is on the pulley system, the pulley. And I'm telling you, I'm afraid to normally pull on these when they're over the door of an RV because if they're more than a few years old, really, they don't like to go back up and down. They just get stuck. And so we don't touch them. But in this case, it's fully functioning and that's good stuff. This is probably your largest overhead bin All of Tiffin's wood is solid. Most coaches, if you feel back behind here, it's tape. And they use real solid wood for their framing as well as their doors, which leads to the colors looking the same and not a different level of fading or coloring. When you have that laminate, it tends to fade. And then you have a different color frame from your cabinets. So not with Tiffin. Another cool thing they do, in case you don't know, is their, win their windows are not dual pane, which is actually a plus because they're instead of dual pane, which tend to fog up, 
they use double thick. So all the windows up front, except for the windshield, I, I think that's those are always that same thickness anyway. But typically with dual pane, you have two eighth of an inch pieces of glass with space between. In this case, it's a quarter inch piece of glass. And the insulation factor is basically the same. They're super solid. And there's not going to be any fogging whatsoever, which I just had to deal with in another coach. And it's expensive. It's $225 a window. That's two windows. That doesn't count as one window. That counts as two. Each piece of glass, and that, that one here, is three. So it can get, get pretty costly. Onto the kitchen. Not sure what that was, but we've got another set of blinds in here for the kitchen. Just that one, not the day and night. And you've got your nice deep countertops, which they're also known for. They usually put this paper down so when it's wet on the floor that we don't we don't track footsteps or footprints everywhere. As you can see, they've started a couple. But uh, I'm gonna move this for now actually so we can see it better. But yeah, nice deep countertops, which another thing that Tiffin's known for. Got your sprayer. A stainless steel sink. Another good. Oh, this is neat. So I saw this on the other side. Didn't notice this one. But it looks like I bet you they added this so they can really maximize the use of their storage a little better. So that was something I bet you the customer added. So if you don't like it, you can remove it. Got a microwave full-size microwave everything's nice and clean oven is super clean they might not have done too much cooking storage down here and this is the cool one here like this is you can access something maybe some cleaners you have down there but let me show you where it really works well. This is a small compartment here. Okay, here's the remotes that I found. There's that smart input, I mean the smart um, remote for that new Vizio. And this is for the sleep paper bed in the bedroom. So this moves a little bit so you can access storage below it, or I guess lift it out altogether. It's cold today. My nose is running a little bit. This is one of the coolest things, though, as far as storage and what they've done, because they build everything themselves, is you can pull this whole thing out. So you really get to access the whole entire corner. You can put a trash can in here or not, or just use the space. And that's quite a bit of space. A couple more drawers. They've got these guys over here too. A couple more drawers on that side. There's the solar panel controller. This um, fridge, a lot of these double door fridge, you've probably seen them before in your RVs. They're six cubic foot. This is the extra long one. So it's got two extra shelves and it's eight cubic foot. So it's two feet or 33% bigger or is it 25%, but bigger than your standard six cubic foot. You can see all the different shelves on the door as well. And it has the ice maker. So that's pretty good. You've got surround sound speakers built into here, here, two more in the corner that work with the DVD player, I'm pretty sure. Let's check out the cockpit a little more. Here's the sofa that needs to be reupholstered. And earlier today, when I first started this, the sun was coming right into this window and you could see it hitting right here, exactly where it's, it's peeling. And, and, and that's kind of probably what happened. They didn't close their blinds when they stored the coach. And that would have made a big difference if they did. Cause it's hitting, it's basically hitting all those sun areas. But there were some years where even Tiffin, this is flex steel furniture, it's not made by Tiffin. So there are some years where we see this and it's like 2012, 13, 14, 15 for sure. 
with all brands we're having to deal with it. So cockpit area, got map light, button for the fan. That's kind of cool. You have your classic fan. And this is a really nice tray setup. It pulls out. Plenty of space for your feet. These chairs, of course, swivel. This one's electric. This one's also electric controls. And then you've got your leveling jacks. There's your side and backup cameras over here. Only 184 hours on the generator. That's not very much. It's actually just what you want to see if you can. Generator start. There's an auxiliary button in case your batteries fail, either house or engine. You can push that button, it ties the batteries together. Generator started right up. 36,000 miles, in my opinion, that's just a perfect amount of miles. It's not overly used, not sitting too much. It's just what you would expect with somebody that's taking care of their motorhome. Turn this on a second. That's the sound of the electric brakes I think make when you turn the key, but turn, don't turn it on the way, but I wanted to show you the cameras here. It is a color screen. There's your backup screen, there's your ladder there, and it shows you the wide angle lens going back. And you have your side and backup camera as well. There's your stereo system here. CD player. So, I don't know if you can even hear the generator, but the only thing I hear right now is it echoing off the other motorhomes and the asphalt, but we're gonna close the door. Also, I should point out, you know, Tiffin makes their own entry doors, I believe, in this case, they did too. And they just do a good job with those. And they're, so they're usually a little stronger than what you see out there in the competition. I don't, I don't know for a fact this one was made by them. I know this piece wasn't, but um, they, they, when you go to the factory, they, they'll show you, oh, here's a 1972 screen door. We just have one just in case somebody calls us and needs one from our 1972 was when, which is when they started the business. So yeah, inside the coach, the, there's a little bit of sound from the generator, but it's, it's pretty limited from what you would expect. Head to the bedroom. All right, so the bathroom. Open up, there's a nice amount of counter space. Everything's nice and clean. No chemical spills, no toothpaste. That's just an access point for the plumbing or something. You got a nice size medicine cabinet. And you have another window that opens, which is cool. And there's fantastic fans here and in the kitchen. That's that powerful attic fan that you see in motorhomes, not the little dinky spinning bathroom fan. Solid towel rack. Probably notice there's no carpeting except for in the very front where the cockpit is, which is what you want. That deadens the sound from the engine a little bit and insulation and stuff like that. Shower is a good size. It has a little seat. It's awfully clean as you can tell. I mean, this came in looking like this, although they did clean it. The photographs I took, I don't know if I took them before or after. I know I was sitting in the wash bay when I took them, but I, I'm just saying it came in looking really good. So they've got a uh, little bit of something they added here, maybe to hold their shoes, maybe. It looks like a shoe holder of sorts. There's a 12 volt plug in over there. Carbon monoxide detector. There's the pump for the sleep number bed or whatever brand of air bed, but it's a dual sided adjustment. It's a queen mattress, little storage. I love how they do the side table and wood. It just looks and feels nicer than what you see. We've got some speakers from the stair that also pump back here. 
individual lamps and another large storage compartment that stretches across. This um, big mirror in the back really opens up the space. Another window over here, not to mention the side windows on each side that put up, that go off the same with the same nice shade system. And so you can get some nice airflow back here. Tiffin's known for this, this hamper. They always have a hamper for your clothes so they're not in a bag in the corner. Good size and nice clean drawers. And one more. And then this one is just a breaker and fuses. The closet is decent size here, plenty of room. And all the information for the appliances is here, serial numbers, VIN number. These are some pillow shams that they folded up that came with the coach. I like how they really build this to look and feel nice instead of just being, you know, it's out of sight, so let's make it cheap. More storage. There's probably another plug in down there. There's 110 plugs on each side of the bed and over there. And then you have another 12 volt down here. It's hard to see, but there it is. Hopefully you're enjoying some popcorn by now for this Oscar performance. It's my directorial debut. I would also point out right about now, there's no odors. Catch the, uh, we always like to keep our keys nice and cold. Now we like to not lose them, is why that's in there tied up. But um, there's no odors in the fridge to contend with. Doesn't smell like anybody smoked. I don't even smell a pet. It's about as good as it gets. So with the exception of reupholstering, which unfortunately is a common practice, this is a very nice motorhome. So I'll go ahead and upload this. And one more thing I want to point out, because I didn't, I just remembered. So basically every brand out there, especially in 2012, you have your air conditioning unit right here. You can see the return and there's either two in the front or one in the front, one in the back. And so that is what it is. Tiffin does it a little differently. Let's see if I can turn it on or not. So the front one, there's still two up there, like I said, on the roof. The front one has a heat pump. You can tell because this says electric heat. That means you can get heat out of the ceiling. So you don't have to use your propane in your furnace to heat the coach, unless it gets, unless you're talking about sub-zero temperatures, you know, sub in thirties and whatnot, where maybe it's a little too cold for the rooftop AC to produce that kind of heat. But just to keep the room temperature nice, you can do that from the rooftop with the heat pump. But so what happens here, Tiffin, instead of having those returns up here in the big air conditioning unit, which makes it a lot louder when it's right there, theirs is built into this really thick roof line, rooftop and ceiling. And it comes out oops, of this side. You can see the full wrapped channel in there. And all along this edge, it comes out of the air comes out and it returns back up into this side. So it really creates this kind of vortex of cooling, I guess, or heating. And it's not only so much quieter, but it's, you know, it's efficient. It's more like a residential system, I would say. So I think that's about it. I'll probably think of five more things, but I think I basically covered it all. And um, let me know if you have any questions. Talk to you later.